Okay. Now think about this. When you are driving a car, the protection you take is different than when you're driving a bicycle, right? It's a seat belt or is it a helmet? So similarly, there are some extra risks to a da'i or a da'iya that we want to quickly take a look at. So let's, let's change hats. Let's use a business analogy. Imagine you are running a business and you are running a business uh, maybe maybe you are you know selling a particular type of phone cover, right? So you can see a phone cover here. You're selling a phone cover. Uh, however, now you see that you know I come in and ask you, hey, how many sales are happening? You're like, we have like hundred covers that we are selling every day, or fifteen hundred covers, whatever, right? Which pretty good number. However, now at the end of the month, I look at your bank account, or I we do the balance sheet, we do the profit and loss summary. And I see that you are running very low on profits, even though you have very high sales. What can be going wrong in this scenario? Let's see. Let's activate some of your accountings. Yes. So the issue could be that your expenses are very high. Perhaps you buy the cover for $10 and then you're selling it for $10 and 10 cents. So you don't have a lot of margin. So, you, and then you also have to cover your overhead costs. So your expenses are way higher than the sell price. So that's why you're, you're not making profits or the profits are very low. And why is this important for Dawa? It's because as we are trying to share the message of Islam with someone else, or as a community, we are trying to bring new people to Islam. It will be very unwise and very stupid for us to lose the da'i while we're doing that. Or at an individual level, it will be very unwise for me to lose my own faith or have a loss of my faith one way or the other while trying to help other people come to Islam. And the way these type of losses happen is first and foremost, the attack on sincerity. Okay, what would happen is you may start doing it for the sake of Allah, but then it becomes about you. You know, how many people like me? How many shahadas am I getting? You know, it becomes a competition within the team or competition with other organization, right? And then so you have to be really, really careful. Is it about me, my success? How much am I being, you know, uh, lifted up in public eye? Or is it really for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right, am I just like, Am I inviting people with care or I just want to like show my ego and I want to show to them that how I can defeat them in the, in the argument. Um, the second thing that can come is, is obviously financial benefits, right? Uh, some people may utilize their dawah popularity to, to receive funds and uh, have improper use of the funds, for example. And then lastly, uh, opposite gender. Right. Sometimes one may fall into uh, this and sometimes it happens. Right. People come to us, sometimes sisters coming to us and, you know, they're emotionally invested in someone uh, in a male who is not a Muslim yet. And they think that they will be able to convert him. And even before that, they're now emotionally invested. So it becomes a really hard thing for them to now. <coughs> and, and same thing happens, you know, uh, for, for the guys as well. So something to be really careful about that, you know, uh, the shaitan is going to come in from whatever angle he can. So these are some exposure that people have from a sincerity perspective. The second exposure that people have is desensitization. So what happens is uh, now you are spending a lot of time with non-Muslims or even new Muslims who may have a lot of bad habits. Some of them may be sins. Some of them may be drinking. Some of them would hardly pray. Maybe they'll pray once a day or once a week, right? Forget the sunnah. They're hardly praying their full prayer. Now, Obviously, as a, as a mentor, as a coach, you have to prioritize and you have to accept that, yes, they're praying one that's better than zero and so on and so forth. Now, but what can happen is if you are only hanging out with those type of people, your own motivation can go low, right? A sin that you used to consider big now becomes a common thing because your mentee, the new Muslim you are working with, is doing that day in and day out. So you have to protect yourself that if you start seeing that, oh, I don't need to pray my uh, voluntary prayers or my voluntary Quran because now you're hanging out with people who are doing like 1% of what you are doing. 
So it, 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 uh, you may get demotivated, you may get desensitized. So you want to protect your dean and you want to protect your own motivation. So you definitely want to be hanging out with people who, that, who are people that you can look up to, to make sure that you have a balance. And your life is not about just hanging out with non-Muslims and new Muslims. You're also hanging out with ulama, with scholars, with students of knowledge, with a bad that, that can elevate you and help you keep your own goals as well. And then lastly, uh, is that just like a doctor, right? A doctor knows medicine, he knows how to treat, but when he or she is in the hospital, they would take extra precaution. They would wear a mask, they would use antiseptic, you know, uh, disinfection, disinfectionary uh, liquids and so on and so forth. So we have to be very careful that, look, you may be talking to someone. Now, there are different people. Some people, they're like very neutral about Islam or religion. They don't know much, but then there are people who are philosophers. They have a lot of philosophy jargons. Uh, there are people who are like deep into interfaith. So you have to be careful and choose wisely where you spend your time in, okay? Same thing happens with sports, right? You can play a sport, but then there are people who are at a different league. Now you can fight them, but you have to think about two things. Is it worth my time? Because you have option. You can talk to, let's say, John or, you know, Jacob or, you know, uh, I don't know, Tom, Right. And if let's say Tom is a philosopher and PhD and it's going to take a huge amount of time and, you know, he's not listening and he's going into all these areas that you don't have expertise in. Now you have two options, either move on, you know, talk to John, talk to Jack, talk to Jacob, forget Tom, you know, give him the resources, tell him to talk to other people who are into debates and whatnot and move on. Or now you have to spend time in learning all the things that Tom is saying and be able to respond to him. Okay, so just something for you to think about what level you want to work in. And there's nothing wrong with finding your own niche market and people that you're comfortable in so that you don't have to get confused about your own deen. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a different scenario. So first we thought that, okay, look, as an ummah, if we are getting our da'is confused, or if you are dropping the level of iman or the level of deen of our da'is, then not necessarily we are not being successful because we may lose one da'i and get one weak new Muslim. Is that really a profitable thing? So we have to first protect what we have and then expand, not you know be in a situation where we are losing the da'is themselves, whether it be sincerity, whether it be confusion, whether it be desensitization. So that's something for us to keep in check for individually. Now, the second area, imagine now you understand that in the business example that we had, that where you were selling these phone covers, and now you have either increased your sell price or you've found a better uh, distributor, better, better wholesaler, so that the price is cheap now. So now you're getting it for five bucks and you're selling it for $10. So you have a good $5 margin per product or per, uh, yeah, per, uh, per product. So what's, and it's still, you don't have cash flow. What can be going wrong now? Let's see if you can crack this one. The refund problem. Remember, if you don't like something on Amazon or if you don't like something on Walmart, you can actually refund it. So that's another thing that's happening. We see hundreds of people taking shahada or thousands of people taking shahada. That doesn't mean that those people are showing up for salah or those people are even showing up for Jumu'ah. So they take shahada and tomorrow they are back on where they were. So this is a refund problem that we need to think about because we think, oh, mashallah, a thousand people become Muslim today. I just saw that, you know, uh, 500 people accepted Islam in Qatar in the last week or something like that. Right now, Alhamdulillah for that. But I think we are also being naive if we think, okay, 500 people become Muslim, we don't have to do anything. Now, wh what are we going to do about those 500 people? Who is thinking about that? I don't know. Maybe there are people who are. But most of the time, as I mentioned in my experience, the Dawa balance has been tilted more on the non-Muslim side. And then we relax once the Shahada happens. So the decision that you and I have control on is like, as I mentioned earlier, what am I spending my time on? Am I a gossiper? Am I just an entertainment consumer? Am I a social media consumer? Am I just going to talk about the people and this and that and different communities and different uh, leaders? Or am I actually doing something about it? Who am I hanging out with? How much of my time is between non-Muslims and new Muslims? And how much of my time is with people that I can look up to? 
And what am I going to focus on? And what will I do about the situation of the Ummah? So you have a whole bunch of different questions that we have choice about. So this is basically our uh, coverage of four, four main areas in module number one. I'll pause here and I have two things for you. If you want to take the mic and speak up to share um, either what's your, make it short, what's your one key takeaway from what we have discussed so far? So that will internalize it. So put it in the chat or take your, uh, raise your hand. We'll ask your, call out your name and then you speak up. Or if you have any questions or comments on any of these four areas, let's do that, inshallah. So you can use chat or if you want to speak, raise your hand, inshallah. 